11 months ago, I started using Blender. And after so many frustration and failures, I am very proud to present my first ever car model. In this video, I'll go over how I made this in Blender. So if you want to know how I did this, watch the full video. Seriously, watch the video. You didn't have anything better. So this is Hamzo. Basically, he's me. I am him. We are us and you are you. He's gonna intervene a lot in this video, so just don't pay attention to him. Car pits are Senegalese public transport cars. If you don't know where Senegal is, uh, well now you do. They are well known for their colorful look and funny stickers. Uh, and their poor driving skills. Yeah, they are not called car pits for nothing. In fact, even when the traffic is the densest in the car, Carpet drivers always find shortcuts to bring their passengers to their destinations. <laughs> Not always in one piece. So now without further ado, let's get into the modeling part. So first, I started with gathering some references on the internet. I just typed carpet model reference and then I got this. Then in Blender, I placed them accordingly. One in front, one at the back, one on the side and one at the top. Now that I have my references, I can start blocking out the shape of the chassis. I added a single vert and then with multiple extrusions, I outlined the shape of the car. With the F2 add-on, which you can enable in the edit menu in preferences, I added faces all over it. Basically, the F2 add-on allows you to add faces by pressing F on your keyboard. And after some puzzle solving and modifiers, this is the result. And voila! Usually, people break down cars in several parts when they're modeling them, but since the car shape is not very complex and I wanted to rig and animate it, I decided it would be easier to make the chassis a single piece. You're just lazy. Then I close the wheel arches gaps and the floor so you don't fall when you get inside the car. Oh, that's so kind from you. Who's not talking to you? I then realized the doors looked awful, so I decided to separate them from the main body. Then I added mirrors, a front bumper, back doors, a radiator grill, and also tail lights. By the way, this is not a tune shader, it's just a lighting setup that you can enable in solid mode but in the viewport shading. You just press matcap, then you can choose from a wide range of lighting setups. At this point, I stopped following the original reference. And I was looking at carpet pictures online to add some additional parts like this ladder and also this luggage cage. Yeah, that's the name I came up with. And for the wheels, I just downloaded free 3D models online. I'll put the links in the description. I didn't want the car to look empty, so I added a low poly interior. I made a dashboard, a steering wheel, and a bunch of seats. Normally, carpets are a little wider and have more seats, but hey, eh, I'll tell you something about 3D modeling. If you fail to make it look like the reference, just call it stylized. So you mean this is stylized version of Naruto? <laughs> if I hear you again, you're out. <laughs> I don't know who made that Naruto. It looked awful. So for the materials, I used Blender's principal BSD for the base paint layer. Then for the blue part. I just selected those faces and assigned them the blue color, and I did the same for the white band. For the windows, I used Blender's glass shader. For the headlights and the taillights, I used emission shaders so I can control their intensity later with the driver. What makes Carapit look so special besides the flashy colors is the big number of stickers and drawings they have. That's why I started adding stickers using decals. Basically, it's just an image with a transparent background and I'll stick on the car using the shrink wrap modifier. But first, I'm gonna subdivide it so it has a little more geometry. If you want to use decals, you have to enable the image as plane add-on in preferences, and then you just add your image as a plane, and you do just like I'm doing here. Now, this is a quick way of adding stickers, but in my case, I have a lot of stickers to add, so I realized that it would just make the file much heavier, and my PC would not like that at all. So after a few minutes of wandering on the internet, I found a simpler way of adding stickers. And that method is texture painting with stencil. 
It allows you to transfer the content of an image onto an object just by painting over it. And it's pretty easy to set up. So all you have to do is go to the texture paint tab, add a new texture slot. You can name it whatever you want. Then you go to the texture menu, add a new texture. Then you choose one image from your image. It's always better to use transparent images. Then you go back to texture and then you change the mapping to stencil. Now you should see your image appear on the viewport like this. If you want to zoom the image, you can press Ctrl and right click. You can also rotate it by pressing Ctrl, Shift and left click, sorry. And you can also change all those settings by, by tweaking these values right here. Once you're satisfied with your settings, all you have to do is paint over it and that's it. For the rigging part, I use the free add-on called Rigacar. Rigacar is one of the most effective add-ons I've used on Blender. It's very simple to use. I'll put the link and the tutorial I follow in the description. It gives you very cool controls for your car. You can control the steering of the car. You can also move the car like this. You can also move the wheels. You can even make the car drift. Trust me, you don't want to see a car bit drift. You can also make the wheels roll by moving the car like this. And you can also control any wheel individually. On top of the basic controls of the add-on, I added controllers for the headlights, the side doors, the back doors, and also the tail lights. I just used drivers and added a couple of ones to the rig. This scene is inspired by Little Speed Hits Garage. I really like their lighting and the shape of the lamps, so I decided to reproduce it. <laughs> Go back up. What's that? Basically, it's just a couple of planes that I modeled to look like NFS Hits lamps. And then I used emission shaders for the light. I gave the background a dark color and made the floor look slick. Finally, I did a little bit of compositing. Nothing too complex here, just basic notes to correct the saturation and the contrast. Compositing is one of those steps you always want to skip, but end up spending the most time on, cause it really makes a difference on the final render. And now, enjoy the final render. I decided to give away this card for free on my Gumroad. So if you want to have a closer look at it, you can get it on my Gumroad page. I'll put the link in the description of the video. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a couple of things from it, even though it was not really a tutorial. You know, I'm just getting started on YouTube and Blender, but I've got a lot of exciting projects I want to work on. If you want to be part of it, I invite you to subscribe so you don't miss any of my next videos. See you next time. You know you didn't say hi at the beginning, right? Get out. <laughs>